uh, Dr. Lal Rutan uh, does not need any introduction. Uh, Dr. Lal Rutan um, is uh, not only professor of soil science um, and director of the Rutan Lal Center for Carbon Management and Sequestration at Ohio State University, but also is a great scholar, a, a, a great human uh, being who seek um, and see, seek and aim at and uh, aspire for a better world for all of us to live in. And uh, Professor Lal Rutan is a laureate of the World Food Prize, which is a Nobel Prize in Agriculture 2020. And uh, we all welcome you. You are chairing this session, but I just made this introduction uh, because you are the chair. And, and therefore you can, we are all listening to your wonderful uh, keynote presentation. Please go ahead. Mafish Hesse, Dr. Badawi. Minute. I think we are starting 15 minutes behind. Yes, so you take them, take them, and then out. we can uh, move the everything. The topic assigned to me is farming carbon in global. فالطالع يتكلم هو الراجل بيدي المحاضرة بتاعه واحنا مسامعين They cover more than 60 million square kilometers. 80% of agricultural land area is rain fed which produces 65 to 70% of staple foods, water scarcity does and will affect food production dryland and drylands are prone to climate change and global warming trends are more than double than in humid areas. Soil degradation, desertification are serious problems in drylands and they will be exacerbated. A large proportion of 2.5 billion poor live on less than $2 pay per day in dryland areas. Desertification is a serious problem. UNCCD has uh, promised uh, to achieve land degradation neutrality by 2030. I wish them luck. I hope it will be achieved, but it's right now not on the tracks. Water productivity is the key factor. Increasing water productivity, more crop per drop is the key strategy. Soil being the best reservoir to store green water. Green water is the available water to plants. Therefore, restoring soil health is essential to increasing water productivity and mitigating the drought. There are six types of drought and understanding what drought is affecting a given particular site is very critical. Those six droughts are meteorological, which means long-term deficiency of precipitation, hydrological, decline of water in rivers, reservoirs, and aquifers, pedological, that's a reduction in soil water storage capacity, agronomic, that's a low availability at critical stages of crop growth, ecological, that's a low water availability because of land use conversion, and sociological, because demand of a community exceeds the supply because of misuse of water. Therefore, an integrated approach to managing water resources is critical. Water resources can be blue, gray, green, and of course we can convert one to the other to manage them properly in a very effective way. But more importantly, we also have virtual water, water that is contained in produce such as agricultural produce. 
and we export that produce and essentially we export water. Therefore, understanding interaction between not only different types of drought, but different types of water at a given system is very critical to sustainable management. Now the water does not act, work, store by itself. Water is connected very closely, very interactively with carbon, carbon with nitrogen, nitrogen with phosphorus, phosphorus with sulfur and so many elements. And this interconnectivity, this coupled cycling of water with other chemicals, especially carbon and nitrogen is critical to sustainability and to generation of ecosystem services, such as carbon sequestration, water quality, net primary productivity, biodiversity. This coupling, this interconnectivity must be understood, must be managed, must be improved. Coming to carbon, which I said is very closely interlinked with water, in the dry land, there are two types of carbon in soil. In soil, organic carbon, the upper layer, which is the dark organic matter, the humus, and the lower layers, including the upper layer in the dry land, is the inorganic carbon. And inorganic carbon can be sequestered as secondary carbonates. And this is a pictorial view of secondary carbonates, which can be nodule or which can be film. And this secondary carbonate formation is especially important in irrigated lands, which obviously are very important agroecosystems in dry lands. In addition to this secondary carbonation, carbon sequestration in dry lands can also happen through autotrophic microbial pathways. That means plants are not directly involved. And that is a very important component of carbon fixation in dry lands. Soil organic carbon, which is a very important component of soil health, determines many ecosystem services, such as water resources, quality and quantity, climate change adaptation mitigation, food security, quality and quantity, especially the nutritional quality, which is a very important factor in developing dry land region and of course the biodiversity. In a way, soil health is the engine of economic development and soil organic carbon is the heart of soil health. And that's the absolutely important link because on soil organic matter content, which is depicted here on x-axis, the desertification risk index also depends on it. As the carbon concentration increases, the desertification risk decreases and this is a generic rule applicable everywhere. Now the presumed impacts of increasing organ matter on soil water retention has been widely studied but it needs to be studied more but what's important is in all these studies each one percent increase in organic carbon content has a significant impact on soil water retention in the root zone which we call green water. I don't need to give you the details, but specific example for reference are many which show that tremendous improvement in water retention in the root zone, the so-called green water, can be achieved by improving soil health through increase in soil organic matter content by farming carbon. What does the farming carbon mean? Growing carbon in soil just like we grow any other commodity like wheat, barley, cotton, soybean, as a produce that can create another income stream for farmers. Creating another income stream by trading carbon like we trade other farm commodity. That's farming carbon. And farming carbon involves management of carbon pools, flows, and greenhouse gas fluxes at farm level with the purpose of mitigating climate change. Carbon farming includes management of both the materials and vegetation, plus of course fluxes of three critical gases, carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide is very important because fertilizer use efficiency, if it is low, uh, it's emitted into the atmosphere and its global warming potential is 310 times more than that of carbon dioxide. Therefore, farming carbon involves all those three gases. 
expected deliverables of carbon farming include carbon removal from the atmosphere and subsequent storage in the terrestrial ecosystem, avoidance of future CO2 and other greenhouse gas emissions, and the reduction of existing CO2 and other greenhouse gases. So these are all very important to sustainable management. Farmers should be paid by public funding, uh, by private funding, by industry, uh, transfer of funds from the supply chain of agricultural products. There are several options, including the carbon markets. Carbon market is not yet very well developed, especially in the developing countries. But demand for carbon offset uh, it also needs to be developed. Companies which have taken carbon neutrality pledges, and there are many companies which have done that, Uber, Amazon, Microsoft, uh, Sony, many others, uh, IBM, uh, they can provide income and get carbon credit uh, taken from farmers and ranchers and foresters. And these pledges queue voluntary and companies have a wide latitude. Uh, buyers are, however, uncertain and the current price of 10 to $20 per credit is not high enough to motivate farmers to take risks. Private sector, nevertheless, can play a very significant role and we must work with the private sector by promoting nature positive agriculture. They can increase access to inputs to farmers, small landholders. They can improve investment in agriculture research and they can help in promoting education at all levels. Fertilizer and other management are very important, but water is the critical factor. Fertilizer efficiency cannot be improved unless water retention capacity of the green water in the root zone can be improved. And this part of linking fertilizer with water is very critical. If you focus on carbon, the need and efficiency both the efficiency can be improved and the need can be decreased by improving carbon storage in the soil. How much should the farmer be paid? In my opinion, they should receive $130 per ton. That's about $30 to $35 per credit. Right now, private companies, some of them are doing a very good job and I salute them, but please do not underpay farmer. That will lose their cooperation, that will lose their confidence, that will lose their trust, pay them properly, fairly, justly, transparently. I want to repeat, pay farmer properly, adequately, fairly, justly, transparently. That is the best win-win option for all. Soils also have rights. Why rights? Because soils are living entity. 25% of all biodiversity of the world is in the top soil. Therefore, just as the rights of human, rights of animal, there must also be rights of soil and rights of nature and rights of river and rights of oasis and rights of mountains and rights of wildlife. Being the essence of all life, soil must have rights to be protected, restored, thrive and managed judiciously. I hope COP27 will put this statement Soils have a right to be protected, restored, thrived, and managed judiciously in the report. Soil and life have evolved together. There is no life without soil and no soil without life. They go together. That statement should come out loud and clear. Soil carbon is also important to achieving sustainable development goals. Many of them Primary goal and hunger. You can never end hunger and hidden hunger, both without soil health and soil carbon. Climate action, very important. Uh, obviously the life on land, land degradation, neutrality. The concept is very good. I actually prepared a report for it in Rio 20, Rio plus 20 meeting. Uh, but achieving that requires political willpower. Ending poverty, good health, clean water, renewable energy, they all depend on soil carbon and soil health. Population of hydrogen cities is increasing tremendously. By 2100, Dar es Salaam will have 74 million people. Delhi, 57 million people. Khartoum, 57 million. Niamey, 56. Kabul, 50. 
Karachi, 49. Lilongwe, 41. Cairo, 41 million people. Every 10 million people require 6,000 tons of food per day. City planners must think about food availability within the city. And that's a very important part because total number of city which will be more than 10 million population by 2100 will be 83. City planning does not, is not complete unless the food security, how to feed these mega cities must be part of the city planning process. And that's a very important part. Education of the next generation is very important. In addition to three R's, the goal of the education is to prepare the next generation to address global issues, food and nutrition, environment, soil, water, air, global warming, personal responsibility. Each one of us is a culprit and victim, both. And we must rectify this situation by teaching younger generation the ethics, integrity, and responsibility, respect for nature. That should be part of education. Therefore, connecting children, even at primary school level, kindergarten level, with nature, so that they know where the essential services come from is very critical. Teaching them the importance of nature right at young age. I would strongly recommend that SCARP 27 consider translating science into action. Creating science is not good enough unless it's translated into action to address issues. Science of dryland farming into action, how can we translate it? By linking with sustainable development goals and scaling up to regional and global level by networking, cooperation, and building bridges across disciplines and political social boundaries. That's the important message that must come out. Soil and agriculture must come out as a solution to global issues. I began by saying these were not emphasized in COP26. That must not happen. That is not acceptable. Being the source of critical ecosystem services for human well-being and nature, it is essential to make judicious management of soil integral to addressing any global issue. We must go beyond producing food and fuel. It is very critical to objectively consider how we produce, store, process, transport, and consume our food. And this is the food system. Food system begins with production agriculture, but the entire chain. And many of these byproducts of agroecosystem in ways that spare the land for nature. It's in the interest of the humanity to protect the planet, to protect the dry land, to protect the e ecosystem. Therefore, we must return some land back to nature, some water back to nature by maximizing the use efficiency of input and minimizing the environmental footprint. Lastly, COP27, and I want to say it very loud and clear, so there is no misunderstanding. It must clearly state the importance of making sustainable agriculture and sustainable soil health management as win-win solution to climate change and other environmental issues, and also being critical to advancing sustainable development goals of the United Nations. There is no mistake. There is no misunderstanding. There is no reason why to skip that. And with that, I think I have saved about seven minutes and I'll be glad to any, answer any question. And if you have no question, I'll be glad to move forward and invite our first speaker. Thank you.